Life on our planet began in the sea, moving ashore as it evolved into an amazing array of species. Some have persisted, relatively unchanged, into the present. Others have given way to newer life forms, leaving behind only their impressions frozen forever in stone. As eons unfolded, some warm-blooded creatures of the land fled gravity, returning to the weightless, watery expanse of the ocean. Here they thrive for millennia, beyond the reach of terrestrial dangers. Whales and dolphins comprise the order of cetaceans. Modern cetaceans are the product of over 50 million years of evolutionary change. Our species is profoundly and adversely affecting the environment, on land and in the sea. The ocean's giants have fallen victim to our assault, and a mass extinction of species is underway. This is no fossil. It is the skeleton of North Atlantic right whale 2030, among the rarest animals on Earth. Without a dramatic turnabout in the health and numbers of this species, bones will soon be the only evidence that North Atlantic right whales ever existed. Right whales got their name from Yankee whalers for the bountiful oil in their blubber. The right whale population, of which 2030 was a part, feeds, breeds, and calves off the eastern seaboard of North America. This was once a center of whaling activity and among the richest fisheries in the world. She was one of less than 350 of her species remaining. This remnant population, once decimated by hunting, today falls victim to collisions with large ships, a polluted environment, and deadly entrapment in nets and buoy lines. 2030 was killed by entanglement in commercial fishing gear, a regular occurrence in her heavily fished habitat. On May 10th of 1999, uh, we got a report from a National Marine Fishery Service aerial survey of an entangled right whale. Once we got a look up close, we realized that indeed what we had feared was true, and that is that she had uh, body wraps with uh, rope and gill net. Our team was able to cut free uh, two of the looser loops but there was one very tight loop uh, going from her, one flipper across her back to the other, and it was only a single wrap of a rope just like this. This was so tight on her that over a four month period, it had sawed about a six or seven inch gash uh, all the way across her back from flipper to flipper. It was a very deep wound and the rope was embedded in it and uh, it was impossible to get at it with our standard tools. We also knew that we were going to have to stop her. And remarkably on this day, uh, she was swimming slowly and uh, I thought this is, this is going to be the day. Uh, we'll put pressure on her and she'll quit. And we proceeded to put huge amounts of burden on her in the form of sea anchors and floats to try to stop her so that we could cut her free. And instead she responded with, with the most remarkable demonstration of power that one can imagine. Uh, a giant animal refusing to quit. Eventually she left the Bay of Fundy, went offshore, and we were able to track her, and she started to move down towards New Jersey, and we were talking with the Coast Guard about getting out there, but, um, uh, and then we had a report of a dead right whale off of uh, New Jersey, and it turned out to be her. More than anything else, geology and paleontology have taught humans their place in nature. And that place in nature is only one of the many species, not the dominant thing on the Earth's surface, not the pinnacle of creation. Geology and paleontology matter in human thought because they tell us that the Earth has an unimaginably long history and we came at the end. Hopefully people will think about uh, things like, gosh, would I be willing to pay 25 cents more for my lobster if it, if it were caught with whale safe gear that would prevent the problem? Because we now know that uh, as heroic as efforts might be to rescue whales, um, it's not the answer. We need to prevent them from getting into the gear. 
here is a, a living species hanging among many fossils and the exhibit symbolizes the battle to save some of the grand living species that are now so close to being only fossils. It's a very interesting juxtaposition and one that I think demonstrates the importance of understanding the threat that's driving whales so close to extinction, not through normal processes, not through geological processes, but through human activities accelerating their extinction.